Hi, I'm Monica and let's talk about the most disappointing books for me in 2022. I believe this will be my last video of 2022. I know kind of ending off on a weird note, but um, I did want to say Happy New Year. I hope you're all doing well and being safe. And I will have my first video uploaded in 2023. I believe it will be my top 10 books of 2022. So keep an eye out on that. This was somewhat a difficult list to make because some of these books were kind of my most anticipated books of the year and I ended up being quite disappointed by some of them. Also, if you did enjoy the books that I will be mentioning in this video, this is my own personal opinion and of course if you enjoyed those books that I'm mentioning, this is not to harp on your reading experience, so read what you enjoy. This is just my personal reading experience with these ones. This list is in no particular order, but we first are starting off with It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. When I first found out that there was a sequel to It Ends With Us coming out, I was very apprehensive. <laughs> but because I did enjoy It Ends With Us, I was somewhat excited for this book, but again, I was completely satisfied with the ending of book one. That's my point for why I'm adding this book to this list, because I don't think this book was necessary at all. And also, I felt the story was really rushed to accommodate Lily's and her new man's relationship. Nonetheless, I do have to say that this book has really nice mentions of hope, healing, and patience for those who have left abusive relationships. I really did like those emphasis on those aspects. However, the resolutions that followed the events of book one was very convenient and quite rushed and I didn't feel like it was really satisfying to read. Also, there was a lot of repetition of the diary entries. Overall, I thought the sequel wasn't needed but I was happy that our characters got their happy endings. Next up, we have This Woven Kingdom by Tahira Mafi. So this one is a YA fantasy book and this one is inspired by Persian mythology. First off, this world is very atmospheric and you're very very much immersed. But this book did seem a little bit too lush for me with its world building and its writing style. And some parts of the book just dragged for me and it felt like I was trudging through like mud to get through some of these parts. It was that slow. The plot could have been stronger because it did feel like nothing truly happened until like the last portion of the book. However, I did really like our protagonist, Eliza, and Eliza is a secret Jin queen. She's sharp and she has the heart to help others, but she really only wants to live a quiet life. But that does not happen for her because there is a prophecy that a Jin queen will kill the mortal king and then there's assassins sent after her. This book is a fantasy romance, so the love interest in this book is the human crown prince, Cameron, and he's really attracted to Lisa because of her fascinating eyes. And this one did really read as a fantasy romance, so I think that's where I was kind of disconnected with the overall plot and the story because I did want more action in this book, which I did not get. The pacing is really slow, but I did really like the world itself, so I'm still debating if I'm going to pick up the sequel of this one or not. Next up on my list is Kingdom of the Feared by Carrie Maniscalco. So this is the book three in the Kingdom of the Wicked series. I also uploaded a reading log for this one, so if you're interested in that, I'll link that up above and in the description box below. If you don't know what the series is about, so we're following Amelia, who is a witch and she accidentally summons a prince of hell, Wrath, and she enlists his help to solve her twin sister murder. Right off the bat, Kingdom of the Fear did deliver on what I expected from the romance scenes and I was quite satisfied in that. There's a lot of spice between Wrath and Amelia. I like the continuing exploration of the underworld and the interactions that we got with the other princes of hell. I did have issues with the pacing. The pacing was quite disjointed when there's other scenes being interjected when you're reading a main scene and I feel like that really pulled me out of the main story. I really didn't like how Amelia's character reacted to certain events that really revealed her true identity and true revelations about herself that she did not really react to and she was really indifferent and I didn't think that really connected well with her character from book one. 
Although throughout the series, she does change and all, but I felt the transition of her character development could have been a lot more smoother. And this is a minor spoiler. I won't say who this character is, but this one character, she annoyed me a bit because she was really maintaining to her so-called true nature and being evil and all that. Overall, I really didn't like only Amelia's and Wrath's relationship. But I think everything did tie up nicely with the curses and mysteries being resolved. Next up is a thriller and this is Reckless Girl by Rachel Hawkins. The basic premise for this book is that we have a group of six people who travel to a deserted or quite remote island. Moreau Island is like a paradise but this island has a really long history of shipwrecks, murder, and cannibalism. But then a lone stranger sails to the island and that's where everything goes wrong for our group. One person goes missing and another is found dead and this group of characters is quite far from civilization and they're not sure if they will even survive this trip. To be honest, I was kind of bored while reading this book and I wanted to learn more about why this mysterious island is the way it is and how it came to be with all its mysterious history. But what we got instead was a very soapy drama with all the dramatic lives and problems and issues from all the six characters coming onto the island and we kind of like worked through their problems and I was like okay. I just felt there wasn't no suspense or creepiness and I truly just wanted more mystery and action which is what I want in a thriller. Personally I would say just skip out on this one if you are looking for a thriller to read. Next is a YA fantasy finale that I did read this year, which is The Storm of Echoes by Krista the Bull. This is the last and final book in the Mirror Visitor series. Just to note off that this series is originally written in French and is translated into English, so I read the English version. And what this book series is about from book one called A Winter's Promise, we learn about a cataclysmic event called The Rupture that broke the earth up into pieces and these pieces of earth are now floating around and they are named arcs. Each arc has their own unique ruling family and they all have different unique abilities as well. And our main characters come from different arcs. We follow Ophelia and Thorn. These two are placed in a, an arranged marriage and we follow their adventures throughout traveling to different arcs to figure out what is mysteriously destroying their world. But Storm of Echoes was a disappointing finale for me. With the previous books, I wanted more of the fantasy adventure that we got and overall I wanted to see better resolution. What I didn't like about this last book was that the pacing was jarring and slow. There's a lot of talk about philosophy more than plot and the ending was quite bittersweet for me. However, what I did love about the series was about the shocking twists and turns, the class struggles that are highlighted throughout the books, of course the adventures that we go on with our precious characters that I love, and there was a very great character development throughout this book series. I would still recommend the first three books of the series, but I feel like the ending was kind of just like meh. Last up we have The Many Daughters of a Fung Mori by Jamie Ford. This is an adult historical fiction. The concept of this book is quite unique because we're exploring the idea of an experimental therapy that has the goal of reducing intergenerational traumas by living through the past lives of your ancestors and their hardships through epigenetics. So that was a quite interesting idea to me. The protagonist that we do follow is in the future, set in 2045, Dorothy Moy. Dorothy experiences depression, anxiety, and dissociation, and in order to not have these mental health issues pass on to her young daughter, she goes through with this experimental therapy. But aside from the unique premise, there are seven different point of views that we follow from descendants of a Fang Moy, who is the first known Chinese woman to set foot in America in like the 1800s or something. For me, it was a struggle to care for each character because I was just reading through each character's point of view and it's a long string of reoccurring traumas being the intergenerational trauma and it was just really sad to read through that. It is a realistic take on what women can experience but just even reading it through a fiction standpoint, I was just sad throughout the book for all these characters. So I was wondering when the hopeful part will be arriving for Dorothy in the future. I did really like the elements of magical realism that we have in here. We also have 
a lot of cultural commentary as well as exploring discrimination and the role of Chinese women has had in history and within America specifically but it did feel this book took on many different hard topics and it might have felt a little bit overwhelming at times however it was well executed and I do still recommend for you to pick up this book if you are interested in it. These were all the books that disappointed me this year and a comment down below if you read any of them or any other books that may have disappointed you this year. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring the bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in the new year. Bye!